Who's the most powerful Marvel character you can think of right now? Thor? Thanos, maybe? You bitch. How about someone who's so powerful they can create whole universes? Someone who's created not only the Marvel Universe, but the DC Universe, the Gumball Universe, our universe. You were created by this person. They're so powerful, the Marvel Wiki has no way of calculating their strength. Like, there was no conceivable way of measuring it. They just gave up. Every month I change Joe Quesada's name to Casadilla. The mods try and stop me, but I get stronger every time. For a long time, the most powerful being was thought to be the Living Tribunal. That was it. There was no one above him, and he'd only really step in whenever the multiverse was about to collapse or something. This was thought to be the case for almost half a century of comics. There were always references to God, but it was assumed that they were talking about the spiritual God. It was only in the mid-2000s when it was hinted at that there might be someone even higher up than the Living Tribunal. Someone who's never revealed themselves before. The one above all. Now, Mephisto. We all know Mephisto. Fucking Jimmy Kimmel knows who Mephisto is now. He is Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> There's this fantastic issue when he's sitting in a bar talking to this poor bartender about these different dimensions and realities. When he mentions the Living Tribunal, the bartender is curious and asks, is the Living Tribunal God? To which Mephisto responds, no, he's not God, he's just the biggest kid in all the playgrounds. And if he knows the principle, he's not exactly chatty about it. I know it's just a silly analogy, but there's something so ominous about it. Sometimes I like the mystery surrounding the character more than the character itself. This mystery was finally revealed by the Fantastic Four, in one of my favourite issues of all time. After the Thing's death, Mr. Fantastic is devastated, and tries everything he can to bring him back. Just as he's about to give up, he remembers the time where Doctor Doom tried to contact his mother in the afterlife, way back in the 60s. And so Reed rebuilds the device that Doom used so that they can travel to heaven and get the thing's soul back. It's a fucking stupid plan, but they've got no other option. The Fantastic Four arrive at the edge of heaven, where they find the thing's soul outside the gate. As they wonder how they can get inside, the thing's dead brother Dan appears before them. This vision of Dan invites them in, offering them all the benefits of heaven. Eternal bliss with all of their family and loved ones. Every mystery of the universe solved. Every burning question about their existence answered. Despite how much this intrigues Reed, he declines the offer, because knowing everything would defeat their purpose as scientists to explore. And it's the right answer. And so the Fantastic Four pass through the gates of heaven, where they come across a single door floating in the vastness of infinity. They're of course incredibly nervous. The supreme ruler of everything is behind that door, higher than the living tribunal, creator of all things in existence, including themselves. They muster up the courage to go through the door, and on the other side is… some old guy, in his study, drawing away at his desk. What the fuck? Some people might recognise the old man as Jack Kirby, co-creator of the Fantastic Four with Stan Lee and many other iconic Marvel characters. He also gets phone calls from his collaborator, a reference to how Stan would always call the artists at the last minute, demanding all these new ideas and extra pages and stressing the artists out. Kirby tells Reed that he admires his imagination and returns Ben's soul back to his body, and he sends them back home with the promise that they'll get a happy ending. There's no concrete proof that Jack Kirby is in fact the one above all. There's rarely any confirmation in any of his early appearances, which is what makes it so fascinating. It does say that it is him on the wiki though, and even if it's not on the wiki, I can always change it myself. The one above all's next major appearance is in Sensational Spider-Man. After Aunt May was hit with a bullet meant for Peter, he rushes her to the hospital and she's put on life support. Peter can do nothing but wait, so he goes outside and takes his frustration out on some dumpsters, completely messing up his hands. Suddenly a random homeless man appears behind him and heals his wounds. Shortly after, the man reveals himself to Peter as the one above all. They sit down for a burger, as you do when you meet God, and Peter asks him why his life is so screwed up. Why Aunt May deserved to get shot, saying that he'd give up anything to save her, even being Spider-Man. To restore Peter's faith, the one above all takes him to a beach filled with thousands and thousands of people. He tells Peter that these are all the people he's saved as Spider-Man over the years people who would not be alive if it wasn't for his actions. The one above all says that everybody has a role to play in this world, and disappears before Peter can say goodbye. He never answers the question though, why did Aunt May deserve to get shot? If he's so powerful then he could just not let it happen, right? This is something that won't be answered for another 15 years, but you're in luck, you've just got until the end of this video. Anyways, I can't wait to see what Peter's gonna do next. I'm sure he's not gonna do anything that would uh, directly contradict his conversation with God, that'd be fucking stupid. 
When Thanos and Adam Warlock absorb the power of the Living Tribunal and accidentally destroy the entire universe, which is an extreme oversimplification of events, they're left in a white void where nothing exists. Eventually they're summoned by the One Above All, who is like, what the fuck have you guys done? Thanos manages to convince the One Above All to restore the universe, as long as Adam Warlock stays to take the Living Tribunal's place. They agree, and the universe is reborn into existence. This story would later be continued, but I'm going to pretend it didn't happen, because it contributes to a problem that the more recent Marvel stories have had. Marvel were showing the One Above All way too much, and it was becoming way less special every time. It's the same sort of thing with Alien. Part of its appeal is that you don't get to see it, but now they're showing its ass every two seconds of the movie and it pisses me off. I was ready to give up on the One Above All, until his most recent appearance in Immortal Hulk. This series retconned Hulk's origin story, saying that when Bruce Banner got hit with the gamma bomb that made him the Hulk, he actually died and was sent to the deepest layer of hell. This place is sealed off from the rest of the multiverse, and is home to the one below all, the source of all evil, and the direct counter to the one above all. Right after the explosion, Banner's body was fused with the one below all's power, resurrecting him and turning him into the Hulk. It's crazy, I know. With the help of the Fantastic Four, Hulk would later return to confront the one below all. Hulk asks him why he's cursed with the powers that he has, the thing that made him so broken inside and hurts the ones closest to him. Hulk demands to see his real face, and the one below all obliges. He splits into a blinding golden light, revealing himself as the one above all. He explains that the one above all and the one below all are the same person, forces of good and evil that must exist to preserve the balance in the universe. He created Hulk to act as this counterweight, the necessary divide between the two forces, and so Bruce Banner continues his life, somewhat more content with the purpose that the one above all gave him. This balance serves as the answer to Peter's question. There must be good and bad in the universe. Both good and bad must exist equally because they're one and the same, and that's the way things are? So did Hulk kill Aunt May? I don't know, it's left up to interpretation, which is what you want from something like this. Not every question needs to be answered, and that's exactly like real life. I find the idea of an all-seeing entity with an inconceivable amount of power really fascinating, even if I don't personally believe in it. Honestly, I prefer the idea that everything happened by chance, and our existence is just a billion to one cosmic fluke. I think that life is a beautiful yet horrifying mistake, and that idea is terrifying to some people. It's why the belief of such divine figures is so popular, because it provides an explanation for a lot of things that we don't know. And when it's not used to tear down others, I think this belief is a wonderful thing. Bringing a sense of belonging and community and stunning art and culture and helps us deal with the infinite complexity and mystery surrounding the universe and our very own mortality and… this is a fucking comic book video. I don't know if the one above all is meant to be God. I don't know who God is or if he even exists in the first place. And that doesn't matter. I don't think we need to know what the real truth is, because where's the fun in that? As long as everyone is respectful to each other, I don't see a single problem with everyone having different beliefs. And if I see any of you arguing about it, I will be more disappointed than I was when Joe Quesada ruined Peter and MJ's relationship. It was 15 years ago and I'm still fucking salty.